Dr. Thomason, can you do roll call? Good evening, President Reese. Uh, please let the record show that all five board members are present tonight. Thank you. We will now have a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I can always tell when we have a lot of kids in our audience on the Pledge of Allegiance, it's really loud versus a bunch of adults who tend to be a little quieter. <laughs> All right, 4.0, I move that we approve the agenda. Second. Any questions or comments about the agenda? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. 5.0, superintendent's report, Dr. Thomason. Good evening, President Race, members of the board, community. Tonight we have lots of awards and recognitions. So at this time, I would like to turn it over to Ms. Michelle Reese to start off with some exciting championships that we have. Michelle. Thank you, Superintendent Thomason, Governing Board, and community members. As Dr. Thomason said, we have several programs and schools and staff and students to celebrate. I'd like to first bring up Principal Nancy Dieb Scott from Higley High School. A fabulous welcome. <laughs> President Reese, members of the governing board, the superintendent Dr. Thomason, cabinet, and community members, I am extremely thrilled to bring up our state champion unified sports track and field led by Coach Brandon Large and Coach Jer Jeff Carenza. Please come on up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And I'm going to hand over the mic to two of our members, Mason and Paul. Where's Paul? Paul, come on up. You get to hang out right here with Mr. Mason. Hi, my name is Mason Crossland. I'm one of the partners in Unified Sports. When Coach Large asked me to join this program, I didn't know what to expect. From the first day in the class, I felt the happiness I never felt before. Some of the things that I learned and enjoyed about in Unified Sports are all the laughs and smiles we were able to share with each other, the lifelong friendships everyone has made, and the competing that we all got to do with our friends. This is Paul Fairbanks. He's one of the athletes in the program. Paul's going to tell you some of the things he enjoys about Unified Sports. Hey, my name is Paul. I'm enjoying playing basketball on using the box. I like to score lots of points on basketball game. One more sentence. <laughs> I, like, I like to do long jump, shot put, javelin, passing stick, and racing on track. We have a basketball game tomorrow night at Higley at 6 against Santan Foothills. We would love if you guys could all come out and support. It's also our senior night. What time? The game starts at 6 p.m. Why are you laughing?
parents and community, if you are part of this incredible support team for this students' this program, please stand and be recognized. President Reese, members of the board, and community, it is my honor this evening to present to you six outstanding individuals who will retire from teaching profession this year. Please allow me to share some brief biological information for each of these honorable retirees. I'd like to first start with Mrs. Linda Dowden. Please come up. Mrs. Dowden was recently honored as the 2016-17 Teacher of the Year for Power Ranch Elementary School. She is currently teaching second grade at Power Ranch. Linda was hired in July of 2006 and has been a Higley Unified in the Higley Unified School District for 11 years. Linda has 16 total years in the teaching profession. Thank you, Linda. Next, I would like to invite up Diana Middlestadt. <laughs> Mrs. Middlestadt is another Power Ranch Elementary retiree. Diana was hired in 2003 and currently teaches sixth grade. In 2010 and 11 school year, Diana was transferred from eighth grade language arts to the fifth grade. Then, in 2014-15 school year, she moved to sixth grade. Diane has 24 years in the educational profession. Thank you, Diana. <laughs> Correction, that is 26 years in education. Next, I would like to invite up Colonel Thomas McCarthy. <laughs> Colonel McCarthy has been the ROTC instructor at both of our high schools. He was hired in July of 2006, and Colonel McCarthy has 11 years in the Higley Unified School District. He also has 20 years of service within the profession. Thank you, Colonel McCarthy.
Up next is Dr. Diane Bruning from the district office. As you know, she is currently our Director of Special Education. She was hired in Higley in the 2012-2013 school year. Prior to that, she spent 13 years in Chandler at the district level. She began her career as a classroom teacher, moved on in her schooling as a school counselor, and then to special education, then a specialist and an administrator within the district. In all of those years, her career took 42 years within the profession. Thank you, Diane. Dr. Bur Dr. Burning has asked to say a few words. Dr. Burning, I let you get get away and then called you back. A few things, as um, Dr. Thomason's already explained, and over that time, I've also seen a few things. Um, some things made things better in education. Uh, some things I've still got my eye on, and some things, believe it or not, have come back again, repackaged, and we're doing it again. Um, I want to say to all the educators out there, and I know there are many of you, that um, for all the times you weren't properly thanked, maybe, for the work you do daily, faithfully, every day, I will say it, thank you, thank you so much. For students out there, um, many of you back there in my department who are here tonight, I want to say uh, keep going, stay fun and stay funny and bright-eyed. Um, that's why people like me in educational careers stay in it this long, because of you. Um, for me, <clears throat> I'll quote Krista McAuliffe. She was teacher in space in the 80s and died in the Challenger um, disaster. She said, I touch the future, I teach. And all I can say is that's such a great feeling. And it's been a wonderful career. To Dr. Thomason, who brought me here to Higley uh, five years ago, I want to say thank you so much. And to all the rest of you out there supporting education, supporting students, supporting those who work in it, I say please carry on the good work. It's great work. I can testify to that. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite up Mrs. Shelley Garrett. Mrs. Garrett currently teaches second grade at Higley Traditional Academy. We are so fortunate to have hired Shelley in July of 2015. While she has only been with the Higley District for two years, she has 19 total years in the teaching profession. Thank you, Shelley. And finally, please allow me to introduce Mrs. Lori Schenken. <laughs> Mrs.
Mrs. Schenken is currently teaching fourth grade at Higley Traditional Academy. Lori was hired back in 1986 when Higley Elementary was the only school in the district. She began as a part-time employee, substituted, and then transferred from fifth grade to fourth grade during the 2013-2014 school year. This year counts as Lori's 31st year in the profession. Thank you, Lori. Members of the community, together, these individuals comprise of over 150 years of commitment, dedication, and straight up blood, sweat, and tears, loyalty to our students and the teaching profession in general. On behalf of the entire district, I want to thank Mrs. Doden, Ms. Middleson, Colonel McCarthy, Ms. Garrett, Ms. Schinken for their years of service to the Higley Unified School District. Our students are better as a result of their unwavering commitment to education. We wish you all the best. Please sleep in, read some good books, take long walks in the middle of the afternoon, and take in a matinee or two on the week. You deserve it all. Thank you very much for your commitment. At this time, I'd like to turn it back over to Ms. Michelle Reese to have more recognitions. Michelle. Thank you, Dr. Thomason, and again, thank you to all of our retirees. It is that time of the meeting when we get to celebrate the points of pride from our school. Right now, I'd like to invite Williamsfield High School Principal John Ewing to the front. Good evening, and thank you for making this a big evening for Williamsfield. We have four individuals receiving Points of Pride Awards tonight. I'd first like to call up our student, Tori Smith. Would you come up, Tori?
me tell you a little bit about Tori. She is ranked number 11 out of 400 students at, uh, in the senior class. She's the spirit chair for student government, which is probably the biggest job in student government. Everything that's good that happens is because of Tori. She played tennis on our tennis team, and she is a caregiver for a special needs child. This has inspired her to become a musical therapist. That's going to be her major when she goes to Utah State University next year. And so she's really a point of pride for our school. And she, her mom says that, uh, I told her, Logan, Utah is a really small town. Mom's never been there. And she says if she can find a coffee shop to play her guitar and sing, she'll be good. So Tori Smith, congratulations. <laughs> And her mom, Gail, is out in the audience, too. I should have acknowledged her. <laughs> Monique Lurie is our, our person who's our, uh, <laughs> the award for Volunteer of the Year. Monique, come on up. <laughs> Monique was one of the first people I met when I came to Williams Field. She is truly an amazing woman. She has more energy. I don't know how she does all the things she does. It seemed that every time I would call her, she was 1,000 or 2,000 miles away. And she has an incredible job that she just retired from and with General Mills. And she told me just a few weeks ago she didn't know what she's going to do with all her time. So I think we probably have some things we can help fill that time in. Her family's here. First, her husband, Kenneth, is out in the audience. And her, her son, Kendricks, he's a student at Waynesfield. Her daughter, Kendall, also a student at Waynesfield. And her daughter, Kennedy, who is a 2016 grad of Waynesfield, she is now at Michigan State University. I just discovered that outside. My grandson is a football player at Michigan State University, so he happens to be home this weekend, so when I get home, I'm going to tell him I now have a spy. <laughs> Congratulations. I should point out that Monique is in charge of the ABC Club, the Ambassador Booster Club. They provided treats every day of the week last week for our teachers. They always come through with every time I've come to ask her anything, she comes through. So thank you very much. Oh, the Ambassador Club uh, board is here. Would you please stand up? Trish Malloy is our classified employee to be honored tonight. Trish, come on up. <laughs> Trish is our IT person at Williamsfield. And if I took a survey of the staff and, and asked, who is absolutely the most indispensable person on this campus, she would unanimously be the person they name. We can't operate without her. She does so much for our school. She's always dependable. She's always there. She has a son here tonight, uh, Vincent. Stand up, Vincent. He's a Winsfield student. <laughs> and I think the thing that I most appreciate about her, I've had to call her into my office a few times to assist with my technical problems. She has fixed them immediately every time I've called her. And then she pretends like I'm not a complete idiot after she leaves. And for that, I'm very grateful. And finally, our teacher being awarded tonight is Jason Karcher. <laughs> Jason's our video productions teacher at Williamsville. He is teaching the most popular class we have on campus. We have to cut off registration when it hits 200. And it's, unfortunately, Jason, about 220 right now for next fall. He just, he just we ha he's on a permanent six-fist contract. We can't get enough students' uh, requests to fill his classes. I mean, he's just in such demand. All those wonderful videos you see in the district and on the website, those are all produced by his students. I get calls and emails all the time from different people in the district. Hey, can you have the video production team at Williamsfield come over to our school and do this shoot? 
he has never once turned it down. He's always there for them. He's got a couple of students here tonight who did the uh, Teacher of the Year video. Would you students please stand up? <laughs> Introduce him. Uh, the salmon shirt is Jory Alcura. He's a junior. Uh, in the middle is Jake Bailey. And at the end is Aaron Tucker. Take an opportunity to look at some of those videos. They're outstanding. Dr. Thomason, thank you very much. Members of the board, thank you. We have a lot of accolades to celebrate this spring, and right now I'd like to bring up Mr. Chris Robinson from Higley High School. Hello, I'm Chris Robinson. I'm the head coach at Higley High School for the swim and dive team. And tonight with me, I have, uh, and please come up so I'm, I'm not up here alone, is Captain uh, Summer Chesley, Captain Spencer Raymond, and Senior Gus Becker. Uh, tonight, uh, I'm here to uh, recognize the team. I'm a member of the National Interschol Interscholastic Swimming Coaches Association. And each year, they give out a Scholar Team Award. And the Scholar Team Award that the boys and girls team received was for having a 3.5 to a 3.749, so it's that strict. So both teams received a silver award for having a average GPA of, well, in that range. So congratulations. Uh, we're also here tonight because these three young people, Spencer, Summer, and Gus, along with Raul Guemes, McKinley Jones, Cole Sundem, and Remy Williams, all were academic All-Americans. Now, there's over 342,000 students that participate in aquatic sports, water polo, swimming, and diving. And only 2% are recognized as academic All-Americans for having a 3.75 or higher. And Higley was lucky enough and proud enough to have seven. So congratulations, guys.
Thank you, Coach Robinson. We are going to point out something, too. Higley High is the only school in Arizona, am I correct, to get this recognition. So we are extremely proud. And this is the sixth. <laughs> this marks the sixth year in a row for the girls and the third year in a row for the boys teams to get this national academic honor. So again, congratulations, Coach Robinson and the Higley Knights. We have one more special recognition. I'd like to bring forward Bob Edgar on behalf of Williamsfield and Cooley Middle School.
While we have many, many accolades tonight, we also have one very, very big thank you and appreciation to give. Can I please have Mr. Jason Karcher and his students please come forward? As Mr. Ewing was saying, each year we get the honor of celebrating our Teachers of the Year at a very wonderful celebration and dinner. And this year, the students from Williams Field High School's video production team put together an amazing video that highlighted the 14 Teachers of the Year from the district. So I have a special thank you from Annette Schmidt, who is the CTE coordinator. We would like to thank the people who helped make the Teacher of the Year video possible. Jason Karcher and your students, Aaron Tucker, Joriel Curral, I'm sorry, and Mr. Bailey. I spent hours and hours filming and editing the Teacher of the Year video so we could recognize the wonderful work of our teachers. Thank you so much for your endless support of our teachers and for the district. It's getting to be the near the end of the year, and so we have some upcoming events to represent that. On Thursday, May 18th, Williamsfield High School will have their underclassmen award ceremony at 6 p.m. in the auditorium. And then on Friday, May 19th, Cooley Middle School will have the eighth grade promotions uh, awards celebration in the Cooley Gym, and Sossaman will have their middle school eighth grade evening of excellence in the Sossaman Gym at 6 p.m. also. And then on Monday, May 22nd, Williamsfield High School will have their Senior Awards Recognition Night at Williamsfield High School Auditorium at 6 p.m. And then we will be graduating our students on Wednesday, May 24th um, at Wells Fargo Arena in Tempe at 2.30 for Higley High School and 7.30 for Williamsfield High School, followed by a needed weekend holiday with Memorial Day on May 29th. Thank you that marathon of recognizing people, and now there's a few faces out there. <laughs> um, I just want to say for board comments, that Mr. Rotovich is breaking things, um, that it was a great pleasure to attend the Higley High School Awards. Uh, you did a fantastic job, and those kids are recognized, and um, with Mr. Rotovich and doing the senior breakfast for 4.0 and above, um, we're going to have a lot of kids coming because the juniors had a huge class of 4.0 and above and the sophomores and the freshmen, and those were a lot of kids, which is exciting. We're happy to do it. So um, it was really great to, to see that. And what was your... Scholarship? Over $15 million in scholarships for kids that were offered. So that was amazing. 
Um, the other thing I also attended is the um, Higley High School band concert last night, their last concert of the year. And I have to tell you, um, the impact these teachers make on our kids. So um, at the end of the concert, one of the kids got up and spoke and thanked Mr. Sharp for everything and thanked him for the impact he had on his life academically, musically, and emotionally. And it was really neat to hear these kids. They brought back other alumni and they played a song, You've Got a Friend in Me for Mr. Sharp. And it was really neat because there was a meaning for that for them. It was apparently the first, the song that they played in the first parade that they did. So kids came back from previous years and got together and, and they played this song for Mr. Sharp and surprised him. And it's those moments where you see that these teachers have these impact on these kids. It's just amazing. So that was really, that was a neat moment last night when I was watching that. So I figured if you were there, you would have cried. So um, it, uh, it was a really neat moment. Don't cry now. You're okay. It's okay. It was, it was touching. It's okay. So um, lots going on. Um, any other board comments? I have a lot. All right. I'm sorry. Um, the past few weeks have been very busy around here, and I just wanted to highlight a couple things that I was able to participate in that um, I was enlightened um, by the things that I've seen in Higley that I didn't even know existed. And I'm thankful that Mr. Harris is here tonight. I was able to go over to a trilogy with Dr. Thomason and um, just the ladies over there working with our students in transition. You talk about tears. Uh, amazing program so hats off to you and mr. mrs. Laura Walsh um, in that program for our district I hear I'm sewing now with the ladies in the fall so I will um, stay committed to that but um, amazing people over at trilogy and I just want to say hats off to those ladies um, mr. Witovich and I got to go over to Cortina take a lovely tour so thank you to mr. Cover and mrs. Papke for showing us around and uh, a highlight there was the robotics club first year made nationals amazing um, another thing I was just blown away by was our buddy talent show um, some of the kids down here especially our sweet one in the wheelchair he was the DJ for the night and if if that doesn't make you cry I don't know what will um, and I'm not a crier but we had kids singing and dancing and playing football and it was just um, an amazing night. So hats off to Mrs. Wittenberg over there for all that she does with those students. It's, it's very well done. Um, I also wanna thank Mrs. Reach for all she did for our senior breakfasts. Um, that was a crazy three days for you and I'm just really thankful for all that you do. I know you could get a job being an event planner but we don't want you to, okay? Just saying. Um, and the last thing I attended was, uh, besides awards at Higley, which she's already amazing night, was the Coronado put on the Lion King little musical that their costumes were amazing. I mean, I don't know who did it over there, but they were very creative. And I'm sure it was very budget friendly, but they looked fabulous. And to have fourth through sixth graders confident enough to get up on a stage and sing in front of their entire school hats off. I would have never done that in fourth grade. So um, anyways, it's been a busy few weeks, but it's been a great few weeks at Higley. Yes, and I just have to echo Mrs. Reach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because we did host a, um, two senior breakfasts, one for Higley High School, one for Williamsfield, for all the students that were 4.0 and above for, for seniors. And there was over 140 kids that have 4.0 and above in our high schools. She put together beautiful tables and made centerpieces and coordinated breakfast, coordinated us. Um, the, burrito the burrito shack helped um, with breakfast. And so thank you. I know it was great to have the kids here and it was an opportunity for us to talk with them, but we appreciate the hours you put into that. So thank you. Any other board comments? All right, um, we are then at 6.0, request to speak to the governing board. 
Um, we value input from our constituents. This time has been set aside for anyone from the audience who wishes to address the board. Please remember this is not an appropriate venue to evaluate, discuss, or criticize district personnel. Policy KEB provides a process for complaints about personnel. Speakers should be aware that false statements about individuals may result in civil liability. Members of the board may not discuss items that are not specifically identified on the agenda. Therefore, pursuant to ARS 38-431.01H, action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter, responding to any criticism, or scheduling the matter for further consideration and decision at a later date. Please limit your remarks to three minutes. Um, Michelle Anderson. Does it say your child attends couch and cool? Gotcha. And still my thunder. <laughs> Coronado. Coro. 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 You ready? Okay. Good evening, Governing Board, Administrator, staff, parents, and students. My name is Michelle Anderson. I am a parent of two children in Higley Schools and a Coley science teacher. I would like to take a few minutes of your time to share about some amazing people I work with. I know there are some processes in place to recognize individuals at the district and site levels, um, but somehow people still get left out. Um, and this is in no particular order, but first I would like to recognize Sarah Stubbs. Mrs. Stubbs accepted a long-term substitute position to teach seventh and eighth grade science uh, from about two months into the school year until the end of the school year. Um, at regular long-term pay. She does all the lesson planning before and after school duties, staff and parent meetings, grades, assessments, and uh, other duties as assigned. Despite many trying days and endless nights, she has never once quit the students or staff. When you get a chance, please tell her thank you for her love and commitment to this district. Next is Rick, Cooley's everything man. Um, I don't know if this man sleeps, uh, but if he does, he's probably working in his sleep. Rick takes care of everything at Cooley. Fields, gates, AC, doors, vents, floors, locks, hinges, carpet, kids at lunch, vomit, vomit supplies, athletic gear, desk, chairs, lighting, birds trapped in fenced areas, and on and on and on. Rick keeps the whole school functioning. Next is Bob. Mr. Bob is the security guy at Cooley. On top of keeping staff and students safe, Mr. Bob has secured our hearts. He treats staff and students with an old school respect. He acknowledges your existence. He goes out of his way to say hello to students. He holds the door open for you. He doesn't scold students. He gives them advice. He's not there to be everybody's friend. He's there to be an asset to education, to keep learning in motion. I'd also like to recognize Jennifer Lamberger, Lisa Simmons, and Tammy Williams. These three women are the backbone of the whole school. If you don't know what to do or where it is, they will more than gladly help. They listen to all the excuses and whining and complaints from the teachers. They gracefully guide students and parents even after the 29th reminder. They welcome everyone with a smile even when they are all out of smiles to give. We are strong, but with them we are stronger. And last but never least, I'd like to recognize Mr. Varner and Mr. Vanderflute, our Cooley leaders. Leader is a proper title for someone only if they indeed build leaders. Sean and Josh are leaders. These two gentlemen don't show up every day to tell students and staff what to do. They are there to provide opportunities for student and staff to learn what to do. There is guided guidance. There are allowances for choices. There are positive and negative consequences for choices. They don't demand their expectations. They communicate, observe, evaluate, and respond. If you are gifted with the opportunity to be in a meeting with either of them, you will more than likely leave feeling like you were listened to, informed, and that follow-up is certain. Thank you to everyone at Cooley, staff, students, parents, PTO, you are loved. Thank you. Thank you. That's the only request we have to speak. You 
guys are so far away. I, you really are. <laughs> if you, yeah, it, and then if you can fill out a form with Mrs. Reach just so we have a record of it, please. I am a parent. Uh, my son Andrew Hanover attends Erosian Camp Elementary School at Hibby. Uh, we moved here last year, um, but I actually used to live in Gilbert, and I continue to, and I am a product of Gilbert Schools. Um, when I attended Gilbert Schools in high school, uh, they were underfunded, and I struggled because of it. And um, it seemed like I was failing, but I wasn't. I was succeeding, but I just didn't succeed the way the school wanted me to. So I ultimately left the school and um, graduated a year early and went to community college and took advanced classes. And from there, uh, I had a full life, <laughs> very, very full life. And then um, about 10 years ago, my son was born. And unfortunately, uh, it was a difficult birth and he is disabled, has mild cancer. And so I've spent the past 10 years taking care of him. I spent quite a few years homeschooling him. But it came to a point where I realized that I don't have an occupation now or a PhD degree or a physical therapy degree and he needed more. So again, I struggled with schools in Arizona. I went to charter schools who lied to me and took my money for empowerment scholarships. They told me they would help my son and my family, and they didn't. And then they, he had to move on. Um, I went to schools that were completely, horribly underfunded. Teachers that were teaching like 20 kids. So I even looked into private schools, but those are like $50,000 a year. And that's like my whole salary. And I cannot afford that, unfortunately. And uh, I came to a point where I decided that I was going to move back to Gilbert <laughs> because it was a good option. And the schools are good here. And this is the first year my son doesn't have to attend ESL. His teacher has taught him how to read. And he is doing that. He's doing really well. He is one of the few students that pays attention constantly for minutes and hours. And so he's really good. Unfortunately, um, I think our leadership in the state are letting us, the parents, the students, everybody down right now in education. And when they passed SB 1431 and decided to expand empowerment scholarships, they're depleting resources in our public schools. And I feel that they're doing this not to improve our ranking in education in Arizona, or to help teachers make a decent salary. My son's teacher works two, three jobs, I think. So um, that's what's really I think that's what's happening. Um, with that, I've basically become really, really involved lately to combat this voucher expansion. I believe the people who are making these policies are benefiting from taxpayer dollars. So they're robbing from the poor and giving to the rich. That is not what this country is about. Our teachers have been building our infrastructure for the past 200 years. I have family members that are teachers. And I cannot believe where we are at right now in Arizona. I have lived in other countries. We are getting there. We're getting to a third world country status with our education. We used to be recognized as our public education as a strength for this country. It is not that anymore. We have leadership that is corrupt. And I would like you to get behind the ASBA. They are opposing the expansion. They have a resolution. I would like this school district, school board, to get behind the ASBA. A lot of school boards are doing it. And so this is very impassionate very emotional speech for me, goes really to the core of who I am. So, I'll Thank you. Me. And just so you know, we are members of the ASBA and we are active with the ASBA. We do receive the updates. And so, yes, we, we hear you 
and the ASBA is a great advocate for us. Thank you. We are going on to 7.0, the consent agenda. I move that we approve the consent agenda 7.1 through 7.12. Support. Questions, comments on the consent? Uh, yeah, can, we, can I just have a, President Reese, just one quick comment. Sure, Mr. Fulton. I just wanted to point out because I think it's, uh, my eyes, 7.7. .7. If people were just looking at the um, agenda, I just wanted to point out, and I'm going to butcher the name, mm -hmm. the, the cost to um, for that trip to the sister school for um, mm -hmm. Mr. Griggs is paid for by can you help me say that first word? The Bye. school. <laughs> Shishuang. Bye Shishuang. Shishuang Foreign Language Shishuang. School. Shishuang. Foreign Shishuang. Language School gifts and donations and the Coronado Elementary gifts and donations. I think in the past I've heard in the community like who's paying for all this stuff. I just wanted to point out that that's, that is entirely funded by gifts and donations. So that's all. Thank President you. Reese, members of the board, that's actually funded by uh, the Sashashuang Sister School in China. Uh, some of our teachers go over there and we do a teacher training and trade students back and forth on a foreign exchange program. And so that whole program is 100% paid for um, by the Sashashuang Foreign Language School. And it's a great opportunity for them. So thank you. Mrs. Kaler. <laughs> I've uh, already discussed this with Dr. Thomason, but just to reiterate on uh, 7.11, what happens in Vegas doesn't always stay in Vegas. And so um, I know that that's a really fun place to go for a, an event. And I know that our staff will represent us very well there. I'm confident. Thank you. Um, one question I did have on 7.12 for the Williams Field Varsity Spirit Line to attend a cheer camp here located in Phoenix. It, um, it is student pay and it's a, it's a high cost and just didn't know what options were. It's 20 minutes away and I just didn't know if hotel is necessary. President Reese, members of the board, um, this is a USA cheer sponsored um, summer camp for cheer and um, like the camps that the cheer spirit line groups have attended in the past um, some of them are flags up but it's a full weekend of activity um, team building is a big part of that as you know with any activity and so with that um, it's actually being held at the Arizona Grand Resort um, and all the teams will be there and activities that run throughout and kind of late into the evening so that's partly why that's built into the cost of that particular camp and it's not unusual for our spirit line and, and some of our sports teams to do the summer camps, team camps in that, in that respect. Yes, I, and we have lots of teams on here for, for sports camps. It, it is a very expensive camp um, that we're asking for our parents to pay and I get that that's their choice. Um, I guess my concern is that it's 20 minutes away. So um, that it was just the conversation I had didn't know if it, I mean, clearly our parents are choosing to pay for it or not pay for it. It's not district funds. Um, but this board and administration have talked about several times on what we keep asking parents for in addition to other activities. Just didn't know if there was an option without the hotel stay because it is so close. Um, for this particular camp, President Reese, members of the board, I don't believe that is an option. It's like a full package. Okay, and a, a lot of them are, and it was just a question because um, because of the cost of it. And again, we just try and be aware what we're asking parents to pay for. It's not district funds paying for it, and they are individual. Um, but uh, the cost of that when we're asking for parents to to put out money, so 
Dr. Fowler, is, is this event just happens to be in Phoenix this year as the other years in different sites? I mean, I, yeah, I think that typically the USA chair uh, opportunities are kind of uh, throughout. Um, typically, you know, historically, I would say our Spirit Line um, teams have usually gone to uh, university campuses like Flagstaff, like for example, but this particular year it happens to be just in so that happens location. It's in Phoenix this year. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. exactly. Thank you. Nope. Got it. Just, just question. Any other questions? Nope. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. President Rees, members of the board, and your consent agenda, you just approved the new athletic director for Higley High School, Mr. Aaron Dilly. He's in the audience, so I'd like to welcome him to the Higley School District. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm sure you will enjoy that. <laughs> All right, we go on to 9.1, which is um, just an information item of our monthly governing board financial report for April. Any questions? Now we have even less. <laughs> Hello. No questions for Mr. Holland on the. See what they missed? Um, for our budget for April. No questions. All right. 9.2. I move that we approve the Higley Unified School District Strategic Plan. Second. So for those few in our audience, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we did meet with our consultant. We spent a Saturday with... Um, the board and cabinet and um, Dr. Thomason, and uh, we recognized we needed a strategic plan. Um, we worked really diligently on coming up with different areas and what, as a board, we would like to see and the direction we'd like the district to go in. So um, there was a lot of time and effort and thought put into this. So. Um, so that you guys know, <laughs> just sharing. President Mies. Mrs. Ford. I do have a question slash comment, I guess. Uh, just wondering if we were, I mean, we're approving as it is with the mission and vision, but I know we were going to be revising that. Is that still accurate? President Reese, members of the board, um, this is our final revision that we asked. We did do some revisions to it. We did move some of the, the goals um, and objectives into different areas, and we did revise the, the mission statement and the vision statement uh, slightly um, as approved by ECRA. So, yeah, the mission statement that's in here, um, oh, man, I just lost it. I pushed the wrong one. Um, it does say we are the school district of choice for students, parents, employees, and our community in an ever-changing world. So um, I see that you had had sent a couple options, and that was, and it was just moving that those words around. So um, those those changes are in here. And then some goals that were, some items that were moved um, were from meeting with um, the cabinet and other people that would be responsible for some of these goals. They felt that based on how it was that they had a better fit somewhere else. Perfect. So we, we just see, that was based on the feedback of people who are going to be in charge of them. I don't know why it just looked like that mission was the same. That's why maybe it's just getting late Yes, and really, I mean, it was just taking that front of the sentence and putting it on the end. So, 
any other questions? Uh, President Reese, Dr. Thomason, could you just comment? What was, because I haven't heard any feedback from the staff. What were your, do you have any thoughts you could share that the staff had as you share this with them? We do have committees that are that we're setting up now. Due to this time of the year, we will be meeting with June with the committees, and each of those committees will be working on the individual uh, objectives within the goals that the board sets, and then coming up with um, specific outcomes that, that are underneath each one of the objectives for the goals. They are very excited about it. Um, the only unfortunate thing is due to the timing of this school year, everyone is, is so busy that we can't meet till June. Thank you. And I know I uh, talked with Dr. Thomason about this as well, but also I've heard some feedback that a lot of people would like us to still keep some kind of motto of some sort. Um, the Inspire, Engage, Connect, we all kind of talked about that needs to maybe um, go away and something else instead. So I know that there's still talks about that going on. Absolutely. We'll be meeting with um, actually our, our Welcome Back Rally team um, and, and coming up with a motto that we'll be using for the next school year and taking a look at the uh, recommendations from the board and bringing that to our committee. Anything else on our strategic plan? I'm just thankful we have a we have a direction now. We know there's a lot of these things we're already working on, but at least we have it together now. We have one place to go. We know where we're going. Um, people will be assigned, so we'll know how we're getting there. So I'm just I'm really excited that we're finally getting this in place. And President Reese, members of the board, we will also be setting up our outcomes dashboard that was provided by uh, Mrs. Ford so we can track the progress on each of those goals and outcomes underneath the objectives. Great. Very nice. All right. If we don't have anything else, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Was that? Did I hear? Okay. I thought so. Aye. Motion Aye. carries 5 0. I actually heard Allie this time. <laughs> All right, um, 9.3, I move that we approve the, is the issuance of classified offers at will employment for paraprofessionals. Second. Any questions, comments? No, all right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. We are now at 9.4. I move that we approve the 2016-17 revised budget number one in accordance with ARS 15-905G as presented. Second. Any questions regarding the revised budget? I just have a comment, Madam President. Mr. Glover? Uh, Mr. Holland, if someday I could buy you lunch. <laughs> I read them, and I, I mean, I understand, but I would love to just sit down with you sometime and understand these things a little bit better. Um, you did a great job. I just, I don't know, you know, exactly all what I'm looking at. So if sometime this summer, maybe, if you wanted to, if that's appropriate. Mr. Glover. Okay. Definitely buy President Reese, members of the board, we, we do have uh, board members that come in and spend hours with Mr. Holland. It wouldn't be hours, lunch is oh. good. <laughs> no, it's hours. I, I sat with him the other day for a couple of hours and I feel bad that um, I didn't bring lunch because I think he didn't get lunch because of me. Um, <laughs> but I went home and my head was spinning and exploding and I was pretty much worthless the rest of the day. So yes, hats off to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate all the work you do with all the numbers. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Our last action item of the evening is I move, uh, I move that we approve the agreement with Smart Schools Plus Inc. as the service provider for current employees who elect to participate in the phased retirement option for and for variable hour employees for 2017-18 school year. Support. Questions, comments on this one? 
Yes, Madam President. Mr. Glover. I'm sorry. You I really, I know. should tell you guys, I'm a middle child. I like to get along with people. It doesn't, <laughs> you wouldn't know that, I guess, if you watch these this board meetings, but. Awesome. <clears throat> Uh, uh, Dr. Thompson, could you just talk? I am, I am inclined. I'm not a fan of smart schools, um, just as at, uh, at, a, at the teaching level, because it's, uh, it seems to me, it's kind of a get-rich-quick scheme for teachers, which I don't, you know, I, good for them. But it started years ago um, because we had an imaginary teacher shortage, and now we actually do have a, <laughs> a real teacher shortage. Um, but it lets. You know, let smart schools sort of skim off the top of, of, of the work of teach. Well, it's not even just teachers. It's expanded. It's, it's attendance clerks, and, you know, uh, everything. And one thing it, it stops doing is if you have, say, an admin assistant that should retire, um, <clears throat> it, it, it's, it um, slows down the opportunity for somebody that's to be able to be promoted. And I think that's important to the organization to do. Sometimes we have hard-to-fill jobs, but I, my experience with smart schools, it has been not hard to fill positions um, and so if you guys don't know teachers teachers retire and they draw their retirement and then and so if they're at the top end of a pay scale then they sort of start as reset at a lower salary so it's good for Higley this is my struggle it's good for Higley but it it's it's draining the retirement system a little bit and uh, it's somewhat double dipping so uh, help me get there please because I, I want to be supportive but I, it's good for Higley, but it's kind of bad for the overall state and, and the, the overall budget impact. And President Reese, members of the board, we do have an expert on that here tonight. So at this time, I would like to invite up Sandy to talk a little bit about that. And then, uh, Mr. Glover, I, I hear what you're saying on that, but I think the state has put some things in place that Sandy is much more well equipped to answer those phase retirement questions and the um, different uh, retirement percentage that a retiree still has to pay into the system. Sandy? Thank you, Dr. Thompson. Hi, President Reese and members of the board. Mr. Glover, thank you so much for your comments. Um, I retired from Tempe Elementary District where I grew up as a teacher and a reading specialist, a principal and administrator before starting smart schools. Um, after doing a lot of research about the need for public and private sectors to put phased retirement programs into place, uh, my husband and I launched the business. Since that time, I will tell you that we have worked very, very closely with the Arizona State Retirement System because we had contributed ourselves personally uh, our entire working careers and we're drawing our pensions um, from that. And the last thing we wanted to do was to harm the very system that, that we were benefiting from. Uh, in 2007, we had asked ASRS to let us know if we were actually having a negative impact on the retirement system. The result was that ASRS put together a study committee with ASRS employers who were invited from around the state. And what we learned was that as active contributing members, um, as our staffs are, when they make a contribution, it is matched by the district. It's a 50-50 match. And a portion of that goes toward into an account for that employee's um, uh, benefit. Uh, it goes into an account that accrues over their working career so that, that that is where they draw the lifetime benefit from. ASRS wasn't worried about that because that's done actuarially through that working career. But the remaining portion of the active contribution goes to pay down the ASRS deficit. And ASRS has a deficit and always has had a definite if they're not fully funded. Um, and there are different reasons why it wouldn't be funded. Certainly after 9-11, certainly after 2008 when their investments fell, they, they didn't meet their actuary assumptions. There are some plan inefficiencies that they go back on an annual basis and correct. What we understood was that prior to 2012, when a retiree was coming back into the system, nothing was going toward paying down that deficit. And that's really what they needed to recover. So we actively worked with ASRS and co-authored a bill, 38766.02, that now requires ASRS employers to pay an alternate contribution rate on behalf of any retiree who does return to work. That alternate rate goes right toward the deficit. 
That's where it is applied to. And basically, it created a fund neutral status of the retirement system. It has generated over $100 million since 2012, um, which has actually brought down the active member contribution rate by 0.25% that active members are paying this year. And it has brought down that deficit rate. The deficit rate has actually dropped. Um, it is 9.48% this year, and it's dropping to 9.36% as of July 1st. So um, I hope that might help that issue. Uh, the other issue that you have is not unlike many people looking at this as a double dip. Um, and I will say that. Um, our retirement system is really established for us to retire young. So I retired. I, had, I, was, I wasn't even 52 years old. I had 34 years of service in the state, and I was eligible to draw my pension. Um, Tempe Elementary lost me. Um, I had skills. I, I had contributed to that community, and I left, and I went out to the private sector. So phase retirement provides a post-retirement opportunity as almost a post-retirement benefit for you to keep the people that are skilled and experienced that this district has trained. The average cost of training a teacher through their entire career comes to about twice their annual salary over time. So the district benefits not only in the cost savings of bringing someone back at 80% of their exit salary, but you also benefit from the return on the investment that the district has made for training those people. And they've already demonstrated their years of commitment and dedication to this district. And they stay for an average of three to five years after retirement. One of the things that we did here in Higley Unified was that we built strong criteria and boundaries around that program. And it really has helped uh, the district to be able to um, retain staff, but also to act as a tool for sustainability and succession planning. So that is really the purpose of all of this. And um, hopefully, I've been able to answer some of your questions and maybe uh, give you some feedback that maybe you hadn't had prior. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. President Reese, members of the board, and I do believe we have two employees that will be back on smart schools next year for the entire district. OK, that, thank you, Dr. Thompson. That was going to be my next question, too. Oh, that's OK. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have even made a stink about it. Thanks. Thank you. It was, a, it was enjoyable to be back and see the reward and recognition of so many great students and staff. Thank you. It was. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Uh, Mr. Glover, I, I agree. I, I have the same perception. And yes, it benefits Higley. And, um, and appreciate the, the information provided. So, um, yeah, it, it that one's kind of a, a tough one. So, all right, if we don't have any other questions or comments, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No? Did you say aye? I did. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Allie's overshadowing you now. <laughs> so that motion will pass 5-0. All right, so on our future agenda items, 2018-19 uh, calendar committee survey, we'll get information on that. This time of year, not a whole lot's happening with this because a whole lot of other things are happening. So. Um, it will give us some time to get some information over the summer. Um, we are still asking for an overview of services provided by the guidance counselors. Again, that will have to come together after we can get through the end of the school year. Um, before we talk about other future agenda items, um, I believe we were, um, and Linda, I hope this isn't a 
a bad thing. We were scheduled for a board meeting on May 31st. Yes, May President Rice, members of the board. 30th? We still do have a lot of um, things that we need to do, so I believe that we would still need a short board meeting on that date to um, do the new hires um, contracts and some of those things. And so I believe that the date was also uh, considered to take a look at the board goals, but I would like to bring the board goals back after we have met with the individual committees so we can have the objectives um, laid out for the board. So that board meeting we're looking at being a rather quick meeting, having to who wrap up things for new hires, things like that at the end of the year. Um, yes, it was initially scheduled to uh, wrap up our board goals, but I would like that we look at doing our board goals for our, is it June 10th? Do you know? Uh, I, we do have a, a board meeting on June 10th. That's the superintendent's Correct. evaluation. But I think the next board meeting, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Schillingberg, we're getting together with our committees on June 20th. June 20th, so I would, I would like to, to do it uh, at the end of the month of June or the early July meeting. Is it then June 7th? Is that a Wednesday? Is that when we were scheduled? Was that Wednesday, June 7th? Okay, so June 7th, what I'm just asking is that on June 7th, we are supposed to have our meeting for our superintendent's evaluation. Um, I think that if we move our board goals, the board goals that we want to that meeting, that we can do our superintendent evaluation and create um, and wrap up our board goals um, after kind of in succession um, instead of doing our board goals as they were scheduled on the 30th or 31st, whatever that Wednesday was. Does anyone have an issue with just, we'll have a regular meeting um, at the end of, or sorry, May, I know I said March. We were, we'll have a regular meeting um, at the end of that Wednesday in May and then move our board goals to that meeting in June with the superintendent's evaluation. For, for what it's worth, that would be better for me because I can't attend the May 31st, but I can via phone attend the June 7th because I'm going to be out of town. Okay. Does June 7th then, do you start at 5.30 or 6.30 normally then in the summer? I don't, because that's the superintendent evaluation, we won't have a work study, so we can decide how we want to start that one, because that one is specifically superintendent evaluation, um, and then we can follow that up with the board goals. Would there be a work study on the 31st? Um, it just depends on if they see that as being necessary based on what's being presented. Uh, we know that there's not gonna be a lot of people, that's right after Memorial Day, school's out, so um, based on whatever we need uh, for that board meeting, I don't know that there would be a, <clears throat> a work study. So that will just, if we don't need one, I don't, like if there's nothing that we need one, I wouldn't say we do one. Again, school's out following <clears throat> Memorial Day. I think get our, if do our meeting and take care of business and be done. So um, then we'll just have that as our regular meeting. I know we had it on our calendar as board goals and that's, I just wanted to clarify to move our board goals following the superintendent's evaluation then on June 7th. If no one's got an issue with that one. So. No. Okay. Um, any other future agenda items? Yes. Um, just, I know we had talked about it before, just the resolutions that did come to us from ASBA and where we, are we as a board going to act or not act? I, I don't know if it's a, it's in a, agenda item that we just vote on? Is it something we talk about? But um, I do read everything that comes from the ASBA and um, I do want us to look at that more close. President Reese, members of the board, for the next board meeting, I can put that on as an agenda and uh, the board will just have to vote to uh, accept the resolution. Okay. Thank you. Um, if you, Mrs. Kaler. I know. Oh, sorry. 
I was going to say, if you haven't already gotten your dates that you'll be out of town or traveling for the summer, please let Mrs. Reach know. <clears throat> we do have an important one in July um, that we absolutely must approve a budget, and we have a timeline early July. So uh, we've got to make sure we have a quorum. So if, um, if you have not gotten your dates or times that you're going to be out of town um, or unavailable, it, not only do we need a quorum, but we have to sign it. So, um, Mr. Holland, that deadline is the 12th, is that correct, of July? President Reese, members of the board, uh, yes, it is. However, please keep in mind, you have two budgets that you have to approve. First, you'll have your proposed budget that you will have to adopt, I mean, excuse me, approve in June, and then um, we'll come back with the same budget or changes um, where you will then adopt that budget for the next school year, and that'll be done in July. July. So, um, yeah, we need to just make sure that we do have a quorum, that we can get it. Um, they have to be signed and sent over, so um, not just voted upon, but we do have to sign them like we had the one tonight. So, um, again, make sure that we ha get that information to Mrs. Reach because we, we have a few days, but it, it would be that that is the day it has to be submitted. So um, it's important. I know summer's hard. People travel vacations, but there are, there is business that we do have to, to take care of with timelines. So any other future agenda? I, oh, yes, um, Mrs. Keeler. I'm sorry. I should have said this maybe earlier on uh, 9.2. Can I go back and talk about it? Am I able to? Uh, if you want to add it as a future agenda item. Um, yes, maybe. <laughs> we approved the strategic plan. I, I was just wondering how we're rolling it out to our community. It's obviously that it's on our website right now because it's posted in our agenda. So is this something now that we've approved it that we can post other places so our community I think one of the things we talked about was you know communication to our computer community transparency so how are we actually doing that? Communicating it. <laughs> President Reese members of the board will be working with our marketing company along with our curriculum experts uh, Dr. Schillingberg and the rest of the uh, curriculum team that will be underneath each of the goal areas and rolling that out to each school and then we hope to have a big kickoff at the beginning of the 17-18 school year and reiterates the strategic plan with our entire school district. Great. Perfect. Question right. answered. Mm -hmm. Oh, I said question answered. Oh, I thought you said you had a question. All right. Well, then 11.0, um, I move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a great night. So thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. 10.4. I move that we approve the award of a contract to McCarthy Building Company in response to RFP number 17-05-22 for the re remediation of construction defects at Williams Field High School. Second. Any questions, comments regarding this? Yes, Mr. Glover, absolutely. No, I just, I think it'd be beneficial for all of us. So I looked at all the numbers and uh, Dr. Thomas, and if you could just, um, I, I asked you what fund 565 was, if maybe the rest of the board didn't know, but how that's getting, this is all getting paid for. I think everybody does absolutely. a good job. Um, President Reese, members of the board, at this time, I would like to Dr. Fowler to come up to the podium. He has worked heavily on this and he has all those numbers and can tell us about the construction company that has, has won the bid and the funding aspects of that. There's two different funding sources um, that will not come out of our general budget, so that's a great thing to talk about. President Reese, Board Member Glover, as Dr. Thompson indicated, um, we are following a process where, where um, we are working with the State Facilities Board to pay the difference. Um, as, and I, as I know the board knows from previous meetings, um, we had a lawsuit that um, provided uh, some funds for us to remediate um, the issues at Waynesfield. Fortunately, the lawsuit did not cover all of the needs. And so um, what, what you see before you reflects money that, that we still have uh, from, the, from the settlement 
that would pay the first portion and then the amount that's remaining based on the the um, invitation for bid and we work closely with the state facilities board um, it's unusual or not typical to do a hard bid um, but that's what the state is required if we wanted them to pay for it which um, certainly we needed their support and so that's why that process is the one that we did um, we did have three um, bids that were opened um, on Monday at, at 2 p.m. I appreciate um, Mr. Holland's support in uh, um, serving like Price Waterhouse to make sure we did everything the way we were supposed to and uh, recording the numbers and and McCarthy um, was the low bid and in that process um, that's who you select and so we're um, we do have as you know are currently in a process with McCarthy and they're building the new building at Williamsfield that that's going extremely well I appreciate those board members that were able to come uh, last week at the topping off party and see see what progress has been made in fact I believe the roof um, was finished today in, in terms of, of of lifting the steel and so they are I had a schedule um, a week to two weeks ahead and so um, we're very comfortable in working with them on this remedi remediation process and it's it's uh, mm -hmm. it, we're, we're fortunate to have the state working with us but I can I answer any more questions just let me know I just have to say that I was really impressed with McCarthy and just the whole staff while we were out with the barbecue the other day, although I still didn't get to drop from a crane, which I was kind of bummed about, but um, you missed it. Um, <laughs> fundraiser, drop a board member. Um, but I was really impressed just with their professionalism, um, so I can understand why you want to keep with them as well as they're already there working on things. So, And just as it reflects on there, so with the board's approval tonight, if you choose to do this, um, what will happen then on the May 3rd uh, State Facilities Board meeting, um, we'd be asking, and it would be going to the State Facilities Board for the remainder, so and I can bring that report back or include that in Dr. Thomason's next um, report, just the, we're hoping for, for that result as well. So we'll keep you in the, the loop. Yeah, so thank you, Dr. Fowler. I wasn't, I wasn't making waves. I just wanted you, I, I'm just, I was very pleased Absolutely. that it was coming out of the general fund. And, and, uh, and President Race, members of the board, I would like to publicly acknowledge uh, Dr. Fowler and his team. Out of approximately $22 million the state has for schools facility board projects, our team has um, taken approximately $5 million or 25% sh just short of, of the state school facilities board funding. I don't want to brag too much. I don't want anybody else to get a, get a hold of those numbers, but um, they're, they're working hard to get our fair share of the state funds. That's awesome. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you very much. More, more money to spend on the students and staff here in Higley. That's why we're doing that. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to serve. Thanks, Dr. Fowler. And I have to echo Mrs. Kaler's remarks, the staff that was out there. No, I did not want to do the crane thing. That's okay. Um, I'll leave jumping from things to you. But the staff was very professional. And I have to say, as Mrs. Kaler wanted to jump from a crane, safety, very safe. <laughs> safety was their, their main priority, and they spent time going over safety procedures and explaining everything and and I was very impressed with them and so um, I, I'm not at all concerned with them on our campus and as professional as they were and everything it's uh, reassuring with them on our campus so thank you for the opportunity to get a little quick tour of the the building so any other questions regarding um, this proposal? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion carries 5-0. All right. That gets us through our agenda. <laughs> that was a big one. I know. Um, future agenda items. Um, I know that they're working on the 1819 calendar committee. Um, we were uh, talking about the procedures and processes for book selections, which is coming along with our new adoption. So um, I think that that will kind of get incorporated in some of that. Is that correct? Okay. Mrs. Reese? Yes. I have a couple things. One, I just want to say that it's really great to not see the same future agenda items on there anymore because <laughs> they've been on there a while. Yes. Um, also, 
Uh, I don't know if this is a future agenda item or perhaps something for a superintendent's report, Dr. Thomason. Uh, I'll let you decide, but I would like an update on staffing for the media centers for next year. Sorry, just writing. No problem. And for some reasons, guidance and counseling was removed from the list and we didn't have that yet. Yes. He said the guidance and the guidance counseling piece. Um, there, there were a couple parts to that. You're wanting a presentation on services. what they provide, how they meet with our students. Okay. Did you see the job description? I'm just teasing you. I'm teasing you. <laughs> President Reese, members of the board. So I'm understanding that uh, we would like to bring um, a guidance counselor team back to discuss daily job duties and responsibilities of our guidance counselors. Is that correct? Responsibilities, just the overview of the services that are available to our students. Thank you for the clarification. Um, also, the ASBA sent us all the uh, adoption resolution. I guess I don't know if that's a, a something we discuss in a work study. If that's something that we, I don't know how we move ahead with that. But I think we all got the voucher resolution in the mail. Um, absolutely, we we did talk about that. We can bring that forward. Should the board like us to uh, bring the voucher system forward for a vote on, as ASB has written that, we can put that in the next board packet. We only have one more board meeting for this school year, so May 10th. Also, with that, um, if everyone could send Mrs. Reach any planned vacation during uh, summertime. We don't meet a whole lot, but we have a lot to do uh, over the summer, so we typically have one scheduled meeting in June and one in July. Um, and then we do try and, as things are happening, we try and get together to go over anything else we need to. We do have one regularly scheduled board meeting in, um, in May, and then we do have a superintendent's evaluation meeting scheduled as well. So um, ensure that those are on your calendar, but if you can send your vacation dates to Mrs. Reach, just that way we know who's in town, who's not in town, uh, and if things come up and we have to meet. President Reese? Um, I do have one more thing I would love to acknowledge tonight. We do have our HEA uh, Higley president here, and with the help of them working together with our HR department and our incredible administrators, we have a 91% teacher retention rate this year, which is incredible. 91% of our teachers will be in the same classrooms next year as we have this year, so I am extremely proud of that fact, and uh, we need to owe HR and our HEA a kudos and a huge round of applause for all their hard work in retaining uh, staff at this incredibly difficult time for Arizona teachers. Yes, thank you. She's trying to hide back there. It's okay. There's not many to hide amongst, so <laughs> thank you. Dr. Thomason, I think that figure would be very well to be placed on our homepage for our school to show our parents and our community that the the wonderful staff that we have and their commitment that they have to our community. Yeah. Yes, congratulations to everyone. A 91% retention rate is the highest we've ever had. So that's exciting. And we have a lot of exciting stuff coming. So anything else? Mr. Rotovich moves to adjourn. I will second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Have a great night. <laughs>